Hello. Have you thought about how it feels to see music in color, to see tastes, to touch sounds? Well, these are the examples of synesthesia, which is a neurological condition, which means that stimulation of one sensory pathway leads to automatic, involuntary experiences in a second sensory pathway. In other words, someone might like to eat roast chicken with strawberry ice cream because the color of the taste of the two food match or go well together. Or someone might dislike a particular piece of music because the color of the French horn doesn't match the color of the other instruments. These people can experience the world in different ways and for them it is hard to imagine that other people cannot see what they experience. I can't remember not having any uh, the, the, this sort of ability to imagine uh, colour with, with musical notes and uh, also I think things like letters and days of the week also have colours. It, it's an interesting, um, very interesting dimension to life really that um, it's a bit like uh, if somebody came to anybody else and said, um, tell me what grass looks like. If somebody's never seen grass, what, what, what is green? And it's, it's rather difficult to find words to describe uh, experiences which you know, aren't actually, a lot of people don't experience these things. What kind of experiences? Um, the... the the, the joy of co colour coming from sound and well and other things and of course colour itself visually is, is uh, very important to me as well. I think it's within the imagination um, and some, something happens there that you feel the same as if as if the colour were um, I'm trying to describe that it's, that it's within me but I actually experience it also as if it were happening. Yeah, I mean, it, it exists in a sort of way which you, you don't actually perceive it and say, oh, there's, there's sort of pink there. You, you feel the, the pink experience, like as if, you, as if you'd seen the pink, but um, it's, it's there in the sound. It's, it's created within the, the brain, within the imagination. Um, it's a, it may have some relationship to dreaming because, of course, um, I don't know about you, but I dream in colour, vivid colour, very realistic colour. And um, one's brain, when you're dreaming, your brain's creating all that, and, well, the feelings as well. <laughs> as, you know, if you're dreaming about something where, where you're uh, feeling something, that, that's all created within the brain. When you wake up, you think, God, oh, oh, it wasn't real after all. <laughs> um, so th there is this... There may be a bit of a parallel there with dreaming, the sort of connection between the sound and the colour and the imagination, and afterwards you think, well, that was lovely and blue, or lovely and green, or whatever colour the uh, sound or the music was. And um, I think that's the best way I can really describe it, so to get this, to, to give this feeling that you have experienced it. Um, the colour experience actually adjusts a little bit like the brightness of the light for your eyes with the different pitches. So this being at the 440 pitch, um, the Ds are tending to edge a little bit of grey and purple. On, on the yellow is not very intense. There can be a tendency to read it as, as slightly purple, and then wait a minute. Uh, no, this is this is the higher pitch, and you sort of you adjust the um, sort of imaginary um, colour meter, as it were. I don't know if meter is the right word, but you. When, when, when I read that as D's and A's, there's the, the uh, actual colour.
colours come a little bit better. The colours are, I mean, the notes and the colours are slow moving, so you've got time to appreciate each part. Many people with synesthesia have used it in their creative process, like David Hockney, Leonard Bernstein, Oliver Messiaen, and many non-synesthetes have tried to create works of art that capture what it is like to experience synesthesia. My aim is to find a way in which synesthesia can be performed and make it understandable to people, including myself, who don't have the experience of synesthesia. Even if the result is not be completely accurate, it can still contribute to the awareness of perceiving the world in a multisensory way. As I mentioned earlier, there are many different types of synesthesia and some of them are more common than others. In one of the most common forms of synesthesia, grapheme color synesthesia, individual letters and numbers appear in color. In general, synesthetes do not report the same colors for all letters and numbers, but there are some commonalities across letters. For example, A is likely to be red. A grapheme color synesthete reports. I often associate letters and numbers with colors. Every digit and every letter has a color associated with it in my head. Sometimes, when letters are written boldly on a piece of paper, they will briefly appear to be that colour if I'm not focusing on it. Some examples, S is red, H is orange, C is yellow, J is yellow-green, G is green, E is blue, X is purple, I is pale yellow, 2 is tan, 1 is white. If I write S H C J G E X, it registers as a rainbow when I read over it. Ramachandran and Hubbard presented synesthetes and non synesthetes with displays composed of a number of fives with some twos embedded among the fives. This image demonstrates the logic of one test used to demonstrate the reality of synesthesia. On the left is the image presented to participants, in which a triangle composed of twos is embedded among the field of fives. For non synesthetes this triangle would be hard to identify. Displays were presented for one second. However, for someone who experiences twos as red and fives as green, the triangle should be more easily identified. <laughs> 